Yeah, let me just start. Um, proud of this team. It's been a uh, it's been a very difficult week for me uh, personally, as I have uh, lost a dear friend uh, this week, and it's been really a tough week for me. And came into this week, um, just and I shared it with the team. You know what I mean? What it was going to take and the emotional level we were going to have to bring. And uh, really proud of what they did. Really proud of the. Uh, the attitude that they showed up with and the way they played. I thought defensively we did what we did having to get off the field. Uh, we gave up the one drive right before half, but other than that, I thought our defense played an excellent football game. We got to eliminate some of the penalties. And I thought offensively it was a very blue-collar, uh, business-like approach. Um, I think with what they did, they gave up the quarterback run with all the man coverage that they were playing. Uh, and I thought Adrian did a really nice job of taking advantage some of the, advantage of some of those opportunities. We uh, didn't throw it as well as we would have liked to uh, tonight, but I give Houston an awful lot of credit. They were one and three. They've lost a couple games by a single score. I think this is a dangerous team. We came in here to play it. It's game five. The excitement and energy of the beginning of the season is gone. The light at the end of the tunnel is not here yet, um, and it's real easy to fall into one of those games where you look at records and say, yeah, well, you know, we should win this. You know what I mean? And it's, it's pro ball. You know what I mean? It's hard to win each and every week, and you've got to go out and earn it. I think we've got some great leadership on this team. Uh, it's nice to see some of these guys really stepping up and the attitude that they're taking and the culture and the way that they're playing together as a football team right now. So just really proud we were able to get on the road, uh, find a way to win a game. Uh, the goal this week was to go 1-0, and and we were able to do that, and we'll hit the reset button tomorrow, and we'll get started for another conference game next week. Each one of these games in our division, in the USFL division, when we play Memphis, when we play Michigan, um, when we play Houston, uh, almost count as two. You know what I mean? Because you get into the tiebreakers in your division and only two teams in our bracket have the opportunity to get to the playoffs. So um, we just got to stay, you know, keep banging that rock. We got to keep getting better. That's the ultimate goal. And we still got some growing to do, but proud of what we were able to get done tonight. I can hear you, Ben. Yeah, all right, Coach. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, I, can, I can hear you, Ben. All right, Coach. You could whisper uh, to me from there, and I got you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Right, so uh, you talked about Adrian because you've been having this two quarterback system throughout the year, and what was it about you know him not only starting but he's like he played the whole game? Um, I've talked about. I played the first two games and I rolled them both. I, I've made this very clear. I think we have two quarterbacks that are good enough to win with. I think that we have two quarterbacks that are good enough to win with. We played the first two games. I rolled them, tried to roll them about every two series. And, um, and one of their complaints was, Coach, it's really hard to get into a rhythm. You know, you've completed four in a row and now you've got to go out. You know what I mean? Now I sit for the rest of the quarter. And uh, I listened to their, I'm not going to call them complaints, you know what I mean? Like I told them, I said, look, it's the three of us in this room, the four with Jamar. Um, we're going to figure it out. Let's talk. Let's be honest. Let's be open. You know what I mean? What, tell me the, what you don't like. I'll tell you what I do like. I mean, what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to be fair to not only them, but I'm trying to be fair to this football team. Um, this week was Adrian's game. Uh, I have them, they go out and compete on Tuesday, Wednesday, and I make that decision on Thursday morning who's going to get this the nod this week. I think they both need uh, the reps on Tuesday and Wednesday to continue their growth and the development in the first year in this offense. Um, but I'll make the decision on Thursday who's going to play. And so when it became Adrian's game, um, he's going to go wire to wire unless he gets injured. And when it's the other guy's game, um, the backup knows that he's there in a reserve role. And if something were to happen and he would need to play, he'll get a chance to play. So that's the decision that we have made and kind of what we've come to. No idea where I'm going next week. You know what I mean? And that's what everybody, what's next week? I don't, I have no idea. I have two very talented quarterbacks. Um, and they, I think, both have feet and they both have a very strong arm and they're both throwing the ball very accurately. I like what they're doing. You know, I thought, um, I think obviously I thought Adrian had a heck of a night with his feet tonight. Had a couple really big plays. Hey, Coach. Ace with United Football Media. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask, you had Roundtree in tonight. Yep. C.J. Marable was not available. He scored a touchdown. He looked good. How big was it to have him on the offense step up that, like that? You know, it's nice to see what he's going to do. We, we know he's, he's talented. I mean, Tree is, you know, he's like the leading rusher in Missouri history. He had 1,000-yard uh, seasons in the SEC. Very talented back. Had spent some time in the NFL. 
when he came in here, really liked what he's done, the way he's played, the way he's progressed, the unselfish attitude that he's had. Um, I think he's getting better every week. And I told him last week, I said, look, Bill, I don't know when you're going to get your opportunity because CJ and Ricky are playing really well right now. But when uh, when you get your opportunity, just be prepared to make the most of it. Keep learning and getting better. He's humble. He's a phenomenal young man. He's handled a very difficult situation early because they all want to play. And he's been inactive. But we had CJ had a personal week this week um, for some family things at home. So he went home to take care of that and it was Tree's turn. I think he's ready for it. The only thing I didn't know was how's he going to play uh, under the lights. When the game lights come on, how's he going to play? Is he going to go out and make mistakes? Is he going to miss a blitz pickup? Is he, you know what I mean? Just is he ready? Because you really don't know until you see him out on the field. When he gets hit, is he going to hold on to the football? I mean, that was one of our big battle cries going into this game was a no turnover game. Houston was leading the league in forced fumbles and turnovers and interceptions. And so that was something that we talked a lot about. We wanted to play a clean football game. We didn't want to put our defense in poor field position. Uh, and I thought the offense did that. The running backs protected the ball. I thought Adrian did a nice job protecting it when he threw it, didn't put the ball in danger, and was proud of what Tree was able to do stepping up into his first game situation. But we've always known he's talented. He just needed to get that opportunity, and I was pleased with what he did today. Yes, sir. And then Mark Thompson only got four touches today. Was he a big part of your defensive game plan? Was it a bit of a shock coming out, or was it just kind of rolling with the punches? No, I think, you know, we came in and said if we can get up, if we can do what we're supposed to do offensively and change the game, uh, we limit a little bit about what they can do. If we could come out, we could start fast and put some points up on the board. I think we scored every time we had the ball in the first half except for the one holding call that we had uh, that we had to punt. I said other than that, I thought we really did uh, a nice job of sticking to our game plan and trying to execute um, – just driving the ball down the field. You know, they're not going to give up a bunch of big plays. They play really good man coverage. Uh, so we were going to have to execute at a really high level, be in balance with run and pass. Um, and I think when we were able to get up on him by a couple scores, I think it changed the landscape of the game. Uh, last week, he only carried the ball eight times, you know, and then uh, this week when we got up early, I think it changed a little bit about what they were able to do as an offense as well. So um, I said I thought they had a really good game plan. Uh, people were going to do this. When you have a really good defensive line and you have the sacks that we do at this point, people are going to start throwing a quick game. They're going to get it out of the quarterback's hands in a hurry. They're not going to hold the ball very long, uh, put some challenges on our secondary. you got to play more press man. you got to get after people a little bit to stop the now throws and the screens. And I thought they had a nice little plan, but I thought when we got up, it kind of changed the landscape of offensively what they could call and how much they could get him involved. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Coach uh, Jack from the Houston Chronicle. Hello, Jack. Uh, nice to meet you. Well, just uh, a couple questions. First of all, how big was the, uh, the defensive work in the red zone? How much of an impact did that make? And uh, Marvin Wilson from around here, uh, how, how much of an impact does he make on the defensive line? You know, I, we've got a lot of new faces. I think our defensive line has six of our eight are new. Um, and last year, um, I think at this point, we have as many sacks this year as we did all of last year combined. Um, and so we really made an emphasis in the offseason that we wanted to get some people uh, that can make a difference. Bill Johnson, the new D-line coach this year, who was with us year one, uh, boy, he just gets those guys playing together. And I think having a guy like Marvin come in and the impact that he's made, a uh, big physical player like that on the inside and what he can do for us, uh, along with some of the speed and athleticism we put on the edge. I think we have a defensive front that has the capabilities of applying pressure to the pocket, both outside and inside. It just doesn't have to come from the outside. Um, and so, yeah, I think the defensive line, very, very talented. Bill Johnson's did a great job, and Marvin's been a, a great addition to what we're doing. Great addition. I think we've, I think we've improved this team during the offseason. I think everybody improved their team. That's kind of a not a real bold statement because we had two different drafts. We had four teams that folded that you were picking. Really, there were 88 starters that were available to be drafted. And there were some really quality free agents. And we tried to upgrade our team with both the draft system that was put in place and with the free agency as well. Thanks, yep. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Tell Mike Bloomgren he should win a lot of games having a facility like this. <laughs>